Okay, hello, hello. My, 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 what have we here? I hope you guys are all happy, blessed, safe, and healthy, and everything in your life is just going well. I'm back for a new video. It's been a while. I apologize for that. I recently tried out a new um, film lab to film and to like to process and scan my photos, but they take way longer than the one I previously used, but the quality is better. So I'm like bouncing back and forth between which one I want to use. I really want to upload at least once a week or a little over a week. So yeah, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I've got my candle burning just like every other video on this channel. Um, it might rain today, so I got the hoodie on. I also have four film stocks in front of me. And today we're going to be talking about one of them, which is Kentmere Pan 400. Do I get rid of these or I, you know what, I'll put it to the side here. There you go. So my mom recently arrived from London, but before she left, she asked if there was anything that I wanted. Besides my childhood snacks, I of course asked for some film stocks. My mom was very kind enough to give me some Ultramax, some HP5 and some Kentmere Pan. Now I've had the privilege of shooting the first two HP5 and Ultramax, but never Kentmere. So I thought, why not make an entire YouTube video sharing my first experience doing so. So yes, long story short, I went out and I shot a roll of Kentmere Pan 400 but before I show you all of that the footage as well as the photos let's talk about this film stock a wee bit. So if you guys weren't aware Kentmere Pan 400 is a black and white roll and I love black and white photography as I think it's very underrated. Black and white photography can really change the entire environment and mood of a photo and can really give off some emphasis when it comes to emotion. Besides the emotional impact of black and white photography there's also a lot of pros and perks when it comes to the technicalities of things especially when it comes to lighting. You can really play around with your lighting when it comes to the shadows, textures, highlights and so on because of a tonal range which is essentially the range between light and dark. Phenomenal photographers such as Ansel Adams took amazing photos in black and white of these huge beautiful landscapes and just by looking at these photos you can tell that he had a great understanding of lighting as well as tonal range. But yeah to sum it up black and white photography helps you appreciate the lighting in a photo more in my opinion as well as like gives us some moody emotional effect to the photo right so let's get into this specific film stock and talk about it a wee bit more as you may have noticed i put ilford and kentman next to each other not because they are both black and white stocks but because they have the same manufacturer if you guys weren't aware kentman 400 is essentially manufactured by ilford which is why they both have Harman technology on their boxes ilford slash Harman technology wanted to create a more cheaper affordable film stock which is why they came up with kentman pan 400 so I researched Kentmere a wee bit more before I shot my roll to figure out why it's cheaper and how it's different and the main characteristic or physical characteristics of the photos that makes it different is that Kentmere is far more flat compared to the majority of the black and white film stocks out there. So if you guys don't know what flat means it's essentially like oh, if you could just picture a photo being like this where there's not there's not any like strong highlights not strong shadows it's just basic and basic doesn't always mean bad um, if you guys are into digital photography as well or filmmaking then it will be very similar to having log footage if you guys don't know what log footage is it's essentially footage that's perfect for color grading it's perfect for color grading because like i said it's flat so nothing stronger than the other so it's a good thing if you edit your black and white film photos such as myself because it will be easier to have more control over the image but me personally i'm like a dark grainy high contrast trust kind of guy when it comes to black and white photography so i would still prefer like ilford hp5 or what's the other one agva agva <laughs> but of course i love trying new film stocks especially cheap ones so i had to go out and shoot a roll of kentmere 400 but before i went out to go shoot i of course had to load this into my minota union mat one <music>
so my dilemma was i wasn't too sure what to shoot with this because i love shooting black white photos in colder environments such as like wintry snowy days as it's more cozy but i'm in the philippines where it's essentially hot and summer every single day so what i did was i called up my mate chris who has been one of my best friends since year 9 or year 10 and i asked him if he can be my model for this video to be honest with you i really didn't have anything planned for this shoot i just wanted to have fun of it we went outside of his house and just took a bunch of random photos to give you guys a backstory chris is from detroit michigan and i really wanted to just capture his personality and who he is so he wore clothes that he would usually wear in detroit which means that he was sweating here um he wore like a jacket some nice boots some trousers and he looked really cool so i'm just happy that i did manage to capture chris for who he is and we also got some cool photos of his dog apollo so yeah here's the kentme pan 400 film shoot that i did with my mate chris and his dog apollo <laughs> We started off at the back of Chris's house here under the trees when the light was coming through. I wanted to get him first sitting down and posing with Apollo and just have fun with the shoot basically. As you can tell just by looking at these photos they are definitely underexposed and very faded and to be honest i'm not too sure why like i i followed the light meter on my camera and i was very careful but i think the setting was just way too dark but still i took photos in like darker environments and they came out better than this but maybe it was just the overcast of the tree that made it really dark underexposed and faded so yeah at least like i'm learning still you know just looking at the setting and the environment i was so annoyed that I I didn't have any colored film stocks on me because the sun was so beautiful it hit the green nicely the shadows were nice Wait, Apollo, sit. Apollo, okay. <laughs> this here is one of my favorite models Apollo sit give me a pull bang, bang, bang. oh he's dead he's dead <laughs> it's a shame because these were the photos I was very excited about the ones of Chris and Apollo because you can see Apollo posing and he just looks so bloody cute and I love seeing like the bond between Chris and Apollo because they are very very close so yeah it's a wee bit disappointing that they came out underexposed but I did my best to edit it you guys were looking at the edited versions of these photos but this is what the originals looked like After that, I wanted to get some more shots of Chris and Apollo right under the sun to make sure my exposure was good and I wasn't underexposed. But Apollo was acting up a wee bit and he just like kind of ran away. <laughs> Apollo has left the building. It's funny because I was saying like he's so well trained and he always listens to us but we had to put him in the cage for a wee bit because he just wasn't having it. With Apollo locked up in the house, it was just Chris and I and I just took some very simple portraits of him. After years of knowing Chris, I know that in pretty much every photo he puts up some sort of sign with his hand. Hopefully they're not gang signs, but I wanted him to do the same here just so that his personality can show in the photo. I asked Chris to play around with his jacket, put it over his head and hold it down next to his Timberlands. I think the jacket as well as the Tims or whatever boots he was wearing really did show his Detroit side. The lighting was good until I asked Chris to sit under these flowers that I saw. Again, I wish I had like a collared stock because the color of the flowers were so nice. But with him sitting underneath these flowers, I think that also gave like some sort of other overcast which made it really dark and underexposed again. I 
thought like some sunlight streaks would go through but not the case. This was also Chris's first time being shot in film if I'm not mistaken. I asked him and he said yeah as far as he knows he's never been shot in film before so very cool honour being the first one to shoot him on film. I really do love these wide shots that I took of Chris here because I think just the foreground of having these plants and leaves in front as well as him holding his hand up with a jacket, him leaning against this broken chair. The lighting in these wide shots is way better and I do enjoy these wider shots because it shows his outfit more and the environment around him such as like this broken chair. I bloody love that broken chair. Lastly we went walking around the neighbourhood and there was like this cement square surrounded by a bunch of trees and leaves and plants. I don't know why we shot most of this in like a grassy area when he's dressed very urban it makes no sense but it. I first had Chris squat down in this cement area And some of the shots were good but other times the sun was just too strong it showed directly into my lens and just blinded the photo i expected there to be some sort of lens flare but it just shows another mistake that i can learn from also i think the problem with the overcast shaded areas was that my selenium meter which gives me my exposure reading might have been in the, in an exposed part of like the, the area where the sun was hitting it but my subject was not so it was giving me like an off light reading if that makes sense chris pointed out a fallen tree slash log and asked if I wanted him to sit there and I was like sure why not Chris found a log all the way over there so let's take a photo I actually don't know how many I have left because I know it's 24 exposures but I'm near 20 so depends how I loaded it but I really don't know how many I have left maybe like two or three this might be my last shot okay let's go and I'm very glad that he did because I got some really nice shots here of just him chilling there because we got some cool leaf foreground and the light was hitting his face in a nice way. So yeah, definitely one of the best photos from this shoot. Okay cool, that was a quick recap of me shooting Kent Mipan 400 for the first time. A massive thank you to Chris and Apollo for being my models. Their Instagrams will be down below. Chris is not Apollo because he's a dog, he doesn't really have an Instagram. But yeah, massive thank you to Chris, make sure you guys shoot him a follow. So let's talk about these photos a wee bit. As I mentioned earlier, it is like a very flat stock and with flatness comes a lot of fades or just like a faded photo. Combine that with an underexposed photo, even just by a wee bit, the fades just shoot through the roof and it's just so hard to get like some nice shadows and highlights and textures in there especially with like a faded photo despite it being flat it's so hard to color correct it or bring the image back from that fade if that makes sense enough of the excuses i'm not blaming the film stock it's definitely my fault for shooting it'll be a bit underexposed so with all that being said would i recommend kent midpan 400 and yeah i would i would still do it especially if i'm starting out in film photography and i don't have a lot of money because it takes so much money to like just buy film process and scan it so if you're on a budget definitely buy some Kenmith Pan 400 if you don't like how flat and bright this is you can always edit it and if you were to shoot these photos well in the correct exposure unlike myself then you can edit it easily and have more control over it to bring up the contrast shadows highlights etc all in all it is like a very smart film stock i believe for ilford slash Harmon to create because it's cheaper and it's also versatile because you can make it look like something else the grain isn't as prominent in this film stock you can still bring it out i guess for now i stick with the hp5 because it's more my vibe and my style but i definitely see myself buying some kenme again in the future just to play around with okay i hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a wee bit more about kent mir pan 400 i definitely don't have a lot of knowledge but i'm just sharing what i do know about the film stock as well as my personal experiences using it please comment down below what you guys think about it if you prefer ilford or kent mir if you guys want me to make a video comparing the two i just really want to know your thoughts if you guys can teach me more about it please comment down below as well also please be sure to follow me on instagram at kathry cameron it's popped up on the screen you guys can check out my photography on there as well as keep up to date for when I post a video or you can turn on the post notifications down below. Thank you guys so so much for watching. I apologize again for taking 12, 13, 14 days to post again. Two weeks is way too long. It shouldn't happen again but blame the film lab. No I'm joking it's my fault. Take care, much love, bye bye.
Thank you.